All right, top of the morning to you. What is growing on? Beautiful morning here in Florida. I'm back at Mr. Kovaleski's house with Tanner. Kind of just doing a follow-up video today for you guys on the GoFundMe. There was a ton of questions in there and we want to get them all answered for you. Head over to the front porch. Let's go see Jim and Tanner. Stay tuned. Hi tech, Jim. Hi tech. It is morning, Pete. Good morning. It's springtime in Florida. It's amazing what's happened here in the last two weeks. It's incredible. I swear some broccoli grew, you know, six inches overnight. Unreal. Definitely more lush. Yeah. Greenhouse come together too. Oh. Yeah, I mean, last time here, that was only a week ago, and now we got flowering cucumbers in there. That happens quick, huh? Well, because we were ready. I mean, I took it, you know, I jumped on it, and on January 1st, I planted a bunch of warm season stuff, and Tanner's going, what the hell are you doing? Where are we going to put it? And I go, it'll be ready. It's paying off now. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, it'll be good. All right, we've had a bunch of questions. Should we jump to the porch? Sure, let's jump to the porch. All right. Get out of this heat. All right, Jim, so who's this guy? Tanner. Tanner? Hey. Hey, what's going on, man? So, my name's Tanner. There was a lot of questions in the GoFundMe uh, video about who I am. Um, my name's Tanner. I started farming in 2017 uh, with my brother in Eustis, Florida. And after working with him for a while, I moved to South Florida to start my own operation. And I was running an operation down there and the cost of things in South Florida were getting really prohibitive to me farming there on a long-term level, I have a young family and was just trying to figure out next steps. So through all of that, quite a bit of anguish, um, I went up to Maine to visit Jim just to get a little bit of perspective because I was feeling pretty horrible. It was a pretty rough year last year. And I went up to see Jim just for you know clarity on just all things. I just needed to get out of what I, where I was. And um, Jim was kind of like, well, maybe you could take over my farm because I'm looking to be here in Maine on a more full-time level to be here with my daughter and my um, partner and everything. And Alexandra, his partner, was there kind of like, hey, like this could be the option to, for you to be here with me on a more full-time level. And we didn't really carve out what that looked like as far as all the details. But um, when Jim got here and we started working in October, we kind of decided on like a three year transition um, to for me to take it over with his guidance over the next few years without really taking in a, into accord what acquiring the property next door. And that's sort of how this GoFundMe came to be. And uh, yeah, so we can take on some of the other questions, I think. So you're not related to Jim? Not, not related. I mean, some people say he's my son. <laughs> First and foremost, I'd like to thank everybody that so generously um, kicked in for this crowdfunding. And it's, it's just $20 after $20 after five. It's such a wonderful thing. And that's what crowdfunding's about. Giving a little bit of, you know, so something bigger can happen. You know, so I've been really happy about all that. And then, you know, the, you know, the squeaky wheel often gets the, you know, audience so you know some of the questions that aren't so happy have um, I'm not letting it really bum me out but we got to address them you know one of the first ones is that's who Tanner is right <laughs> and I'm not going anywhere long term and you know he's actually told me that I'm welcome here as long as I can travel you know I can stay out back and I'd love to be able to do that come back and forth um, and one of the other things about how precious this piece of land is. I mean, there's a lot of the people saying, well, just, you know, cash in here and go buy some more land. But that's the pioneer mentality. Use up the land, move on. I've spent a lot of energy here and affection for this land. And it's paid me back in how well it produces. You know, I'm a vital component to this piece of land. And it's vital to me. It, it takes care of me. Um, and I hope to be able to have that for Tanner too. But with how real estate prices have rocketed around here, 
and they are coming down so we that's something we can address too because i think you know as i get closer to a date when tom has to sell because he wants to be out of here by october that i can negotiate a different price because of the market falling but and also to show him how many people supported this you know so he'll be probably more likely to drop a price for me um, so we just had to pick a number and we picked one based on a realtor that gave me an estimate um, two months ago and it's you know it's gone down since then for a little bit more clarity you know jimmy said here I don't think people realize which house is which. So you're living in the house that's next to mom's. You've been farming mom's for... 12 years. 12 years, but you've only been in this house for how many years and you lived in the little tiny house down the road which your brother owns also, right? Right, so what allowed me to produce, or purchase this house for my ex-wife was my brother bought the tiny house which was the original Freedom House. Um, and I used the money that he gave me for that to buy this house. Yeah, I'm my, it. and you have a mortgage still. And then I took a mortgage out with my mom, which I was going to settle with her estate. So I'll be able to pay that off and have that free and clear here. Um, so, yeah, and then mom's house has always been my brother's. He bought that when my father died so mom could move next door. And then he's allowed me, even back when, when I was watering with city water, he didn't charge me the water bill. He just said, go for it, you're taking care of mom, it's a good deal. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so why not just take the money and buy a lot down the road, Jim? I saw that question a lot. Well, I try to address that with how much energy is part of my farming here with this piece of land. I mean, it's a special thing to have an interaction over a decade on a piece of land. You know, I know so much about it and it knows most so much about me because it talks to me and tells me how to do things. That's how I've been able to double production here for the last four years, using the same piece of land, because the land's telling me how to use it. Um, and the benefits are, you know, obviously I'm making money on it, um, but also the benefits I'm feeding more and more people out of it. And I guess I gotta address that, you know, everybody say, ah, oh, I'm making so much money. I am making a lot of money for a small piece of land, but, you know, even at a, you know, a four or five hundred thousand dollar, you know, mortgage on these two properties. There's no way that you know the forty or fifty thousand dollars I make in a summer, in a season, would pay a mortgage on that. You know, so I need to somehow reduce that, and that's what I want to do to make it affordable. You know, and as you know, if it doesn't work out, we're gonna, you know, people have offered to buy it for us and then lease it back to us. But then you've got a middleman. Same thing with the land trusts. You know, I looked into looking, um, forming one of them, but what you have to do is form a board of directors and then some kind of 501c3, and it's a bunch of paperwork with lawyers, and then you've got people on a board of directors that is deciding how to farm the land. And, you know, I've watched, you know, that happened to Sweetwater, you know, and people that aren't farmers making decisions, it happened to Scott Neering's place, you know, because they tried to preserve it as a monument up there in Maine, and it's just, it needs to be a living thing and farmers present. Um, and I guess I'd like to mention that too, because I talked to Scott Neering and Elliot Coleman had a handshake agreement when they bought, when um, Elliot bought the land from Scott. You know, the, here it is, this is what I bought it for, you can have it for the same amount. You know, and I'm having a handshake agreement with Tanner. I mean, people are saying he could just bail out, right? But he's promised me he'll farm it as long as he can. He'd like to be here 30 years, he told me. You know, and I'll be able to come back and visit it. But, you know, that handshake agreement allows for wiggle room, too. So, you know, something, shit does happen. I mean, stuff happens in the world. Um, but, you know, just to have an honorable agreement. And once you enter honor into a place, it can spread. But when you put that worry and all that energy in, then you get the lawyers here. So, I mean, I mean, I know I'm expecting other people to fund my handshake agreement, but... That's, you know, I'm hoping the people that know me know I'm not a money grubber. I hope so. Jim, about what, 60, 65% of your production right now comes out of the yard next door, right? No, I'd say it's more like... Um, Is it 50-50? Even a little less. A little less coming yeah, out of the next door? Okay. Yeah, especially now that Tanner's starting to rock the backyard with a food forest, that's going to be even more. So that um, kick it up even higher. Right. Um, yeah, but it's the older land older used land, so it's a little richer. I watch the spinaches just do a little better over there. Because um, you've been building soil for so yeah. long. And the it's idea, just a little idea being, though, if you're to lose that other piece of land, I mean, Tanner's not going to be able to make a, a living and you know, support it. It'll be family. less likely, less likely. And then that also uh, offers, you know, some 
opportunities to maybe use it differently. So, you know, as a farm to table, bed and breakfast, Airbnb kind of thing that he'd be able to do to get extra income. And, you know, that'll be up to him to work out. Um, but that would be a possibility, but not to lose the continuity of the land there. You know, um, and even, yeah, interns, you know, there's a shed next door that's on a separate lot. I guess I should mention that too, because there's this house, which sits on a double lot. That house over there has a garage and uh, on a lot of its own, and then the house. I guess there was a, a divorce at one time that split that. So that has to get bought at the same time, or needs to get bought at the same time. The mom's is basically two lots. Right? Yeah, and that brings up the value a bit. Um, yeah, I mean, my intention is to be here, you know, forever. For anybody that does know me, this has been, you know, finding a place to settle up has been on my radar for a long time. Jim is giving me, even with just this place, it's giving me an amazing opportunity. Also working alongside Jim has been a total dream. Um, but yeah, my intentions long before I got here were settle up on a place, serve a community, growing food for that community alongside my family and now alongside Jim and um, that's that's been the dream so God bless Jim you know he's like really presenting me with with an incredible um, opportunity as we discussed in the you know sweet potato roundup video like I mean it's it's totally incredible um, and then yeah like with time this place, Jim's, Jim's basically providing me an incubator to, to take up this space. Like I, he's, I'm an incubator farmer on Jim's land right now. I could do the same for, um, for people down the line. This community could support a lot more farmers as Jim always speaks to, especially with this, this composting program that they run here and everything. So it's like, we have these little domiciles of like, um, the shed, we could convert a small space back there and provide an incubator program for young farmers to come here, get paid a small wage to then be able to go off and start their own farm. And maybe we'll have the connections at that point to have a space that they can just go to. So my dream would be to, to grow more farmers here in Jim, in Jim's name because this wouldn't be possible without Jim. So the dream is bigger than this house, you know, and, um, and it's it would be so po it's so possible, and what these folks are contributing to can make that happen, um, and it's a big it's a big dream, um, but I think I think we can do it. Um, I do too. We'll make it happen no matter how much money comes in, but right. um, it'll just make it a lot simpler if we can go to my brother with a, a set amount of money and negotiate with him. You know. Um, yeah. That's important to note. It's like, we will make it happen. Like, we're not, like, we're not totally, like, we're not so broke that it's like, if this doesn't work out, we're going to die. It's just like, what if w this could serve as an example for so many people? And um, the gift economy and all these ideas, it's like, how beautiful would it be to just, you know, to make it happen? So we'll see how it goes. I also want to say to to the nonprofits and, like, the whole opening of 501c3 and doing all this, you see, I know tons of examples of farmland run by a 501c3 with the board of directors and everything. The farmer ends up making nothing. The board of directors makes everything. They're running a 50 person CSA. The farmer's working his tail off making $600 a week and the board of directors is taking the rest of the money. It's like, it's just not fair to the farmer. Um, so I, I hear it, but it's like, it's just, it's not a sustainable model. Or not one we're interested in. Or not one we're interested yeah. in. Thanks for coming out, Pete. Um, you know, straighten some of the questions out. Um, and really, just again, a big shout out to the people that donated. It's been really wonderful. Um, I feel really good about it. Thanks, guys. Founder. Founder. All right, guys, so I hope we got all of those questions answered for you. I think I kind of addressed everything in the comments. You guys know who Tanner is now. Um, really, I hope we can help John, you know, Jim fund this here. You know, if we were to look at how many subscribers I had, I mean, it's like a buck, buck and a half a piece if you wanted to fully fund this. Probably don't need to make it to that point, but it's not like we're asking for a lot from one person. Um, you know, if everybody contributes a little, think about how many people we could help this way. So I think GoFundMe is an awesome platform for that. 
Hope we answered all your questions. Hope to save this corner farm from turning into a grass hole or somebody that doesn't want to farm and let's just hope we can make this work out. Like Jim said, no matter what, we're gonna make it work. Um, this was the first attempt. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope we answered all the questions. Most importantly, guys, it's 2023. Get out there and start a garden. Pound some dirt.